The word seller doer never seems to go away in the consulting engineering industry. Is your firm asking you to be a seller doer, do the work, but also sell their services and bring in more work? It's not an easy thing to do, especially for us as technical professionals who haven't had that type of training. Well, in this week's engineering management lessons video, I have with me Amanda Payne. Amanda is an associate vice president and business development director at Horner and Schifrin. And Amanda has three very specific tips for you on how you can improve your business development or your seller doer skills and really become better right away. Amanda, welcome aboard. Let's start off with tip number one. What do you have for us? I would say communication is huge. So talk about that communication being not just probably internally and externally. Yeah, both. I mean, internal communication is just as important, if not more important than external communication in the industry, um, because you want to basically be able to set your goals um, and be able to work with your manager and um, senior level staff and business development staff to so everybody is on the same page and understanding of what your role is as a seller doer um, at your firm and um, help lead you to being successful. That's awesome. All right. So communication, what's the second one you have for us? I would say building trust uh, with the clients um, is absolutely huge. I tell everybody, you know, business development is not about necessarily just selling your service. It's about building trust with your clients. And if you are meeting with the client and you basically are trying to quickly, you know, give them a, a quick uh, rundown of everything that you could do for them, but not really getting to know them, your success rate for maybe winning a project is not going to be as high as being able to actually get to know them and spending multiple, you know, multiple meetings with them. Um, and that is what's going to establish a long-term relationship with your clients over just maybe a one project. Yeah, that's a great point because you're not in an industry where you're trying to sell a service that's $50. This is- no thousands or maybe millions of dollars worth of engineering projects. So taking as much time as it takes, quite frankly, to build those relationships with people, build their trust so that they will confide in you and bring large, you know, high profile projects to you and your firm is absolutely critical. Mm -hmm. What's your third one, Amanda? I would say for seller doers, you know, it's important to obviously sell your service, right? But um, also having the firm knowledge um, for other, you know, uh, different services that you offer. Um, you know, most firms nowadays offer multiple services. It's not just one service or even two services. So understanding what those other, um, you know, business units look like at your firm, um, not that you need to, you know, be able to speak, to, you know, everything about it, but just understanding what they do and kind of some of their past um, projects that they've done is huge. So when you're meeting with a client, um, you can also cross sell those services too. All right. I hope that you enjoyed those three tips. And that last one is critical. I worked at a consulting engineering firm for a long time and we didn't cross sell as good as we could have. And I feel like we left thousands and thousands of dollars on the table. Right. When you're talking with a client, if you just mention a couple of the other services that your firm offers, you may open the door to new projects, maybe thousands or millions of dollars that weren't coming in before. I hope you enjoyed this video. We put out videos like this on a weekly basis to help engineers become better managers and leaders. Please subscribe here so that you can get our weekly insights and really to help you grow and become the best engineer that you can be. We'll see you next week.